everyone and welcome to the latest in our series on creative writing tips and this week um, we've already sort of gone over on how to generate ideas and how to get a routine going now we're going to start to get into a few more specifics so this is going to talk about how to structure a story so this could be through a script this could be I mean in some respects it can be an article it can be I mean a film script I mean that's, that's you know that's a common one and two uh, books that I found really useful for this were Story by Robert McKee and The Hero's Journey by Christopher Vogler and The Hero's Journey is loosely based on this whole idea of the monomyth which Joseph Campbell developed and it goes into this idea of in effect that there are certain stories throughout cultures that are fairly consistent and there are certain symbols that are fairly consistent and broadly speaking okay it's not a hundred percent true and it doesn't always hold up for everything but they're right the idea is is that there are certain mythic qualities that seem to be fairly consistent throughout cultures and we don't know why that is but it is and so we're also going to be talking about that with character which will be and in fact, the second one to this, because I think people sometimes ask, you know, what is more important, you know, character or plot structure? And the answer, which, OK, sounds like a bit of a cop out. And in some respects, it is character and plot are very sort of closely intertwined. I think it is possible to have a very interesting film with interesting characters that doesn't have a great plot. That is possible. I would say it's a lot harder to have a brilliant plot with not very interesting characters, because I think that engagement needs to be there. But as I say, to keep it simple, for now we're going to talk about plot, which we'll inevitably talk about characters, but we'll, we'll keep it to that. And then talk a bit more about characters and developing characters next next time. So the first thing with um, structure, so traditionally there is the three-act structure or to keep it even simpler, beginning, middle, and end. And of course, each of those things need to be strong in different ways. The beginning is what gets someone's attention. So for example, Die Hard with a Vengeance, great example of this. So you've got the first strains of summer in the city, you've got all these pictures of New York. So immediately you're in the location, and as it's going along, it's, it's cool, everything's building up and you get in a sense that it's gonna be based around this neighborhood. And then the explosion happens and the song cuts out right in the middle of it. And this is a brilliant introduction because you're immediately in the situation, you know something terrible has happened. And then, like I say, almost immediately you are thrust into the middle of the action. I think speed is very good for that as well. But as I say, you don't necessarily need an explosive beginning, but you do need a beginning that, in effect, engages people's attention and makes you sort of wonder where this is going. So a, a good intro you know, gets into people's heads. It kind of makes them wonder, where is this thing going? So, like I say, it doesn't necessarily have to be explosive. It can equally be, you know, you're in the middle of a situation where, like a Bridget Jones, where you're in an awkward situation, and it's quite engaging. And then, of course, you've got the middle, which arguably I would say is the trickiest bit of three, because, in effect, you're bridging between the beginning and the end and you have to try and keep things going and keep the momentum going and inevitably this is where it gets trickier because you have to include certain complications you have to bring in characters and this is where things can get a bit baggy so if you have too many characters or if you have scenes that don't really go anywhere I mean like the one people are talking about at the moment is the whole casino thing with Last Jedi and it's like yeah, I, I get why people don't like that, because it felt like it wasn't really going anywhere, and there was kind of a payoff to it, but like I say, it wasn't as strong as other scenes, and I get that. But this is the tricky thing you will find when you write for yourself, is trying to bridge everything together is the trickier thing. And of course the ending, and the ending, if you can get a punchy ending, that can make all the difference. Because, like you say, a great, intro gets people engaged and it means that they're not sort of looking at their phone or you know thinking about what they're going to have for dinner tonight because you've got their attention and I think that I think is really crucial a really good opening 
will cut out you know i mean i've seen this i've physically seen this in cinemas where someone's watching a film and people will be on their phone people will be talking but if that intro is good enough boom everyone's quiet and if you get them along for the right like catch me if you can catch me if you can is not the best film i've ever seen but because of the pace and because of the quality of the story i was in two different cinemas one was an independent one in chichester and one was a um like a cineplex like multiplex thing in um brighton and the thing is the reaction was exactly the same both audiences loved it and sort of reacted almost exactly the same way at exactly the same points and that is the mark of a good story and the other thing i want to talk about this is in terms of pace like how long something is and the thing is you can make your story as long as you want that's the thing if you can pace it in the right way like for example something like goodfellas that will last about two and a half hours any longer than that but you won't notice because it's good and if it's good and it's engaging and you like the characters the fact that it's a little bit longer than you might like the chances are you'll bling it and you're like wow did it really take that long wow that was really good and that's what you've got to really recognize when you're writing something is in effect does the thing that you're writing fit the pace so this this can apply to dialogue this can apply to the length of what you're writing so for i mean for example with the comic one thing that we've had to change and we considered this was going from uh 22 page issues to four like single 40 page issues and the reason i wanted to do that i was looking back on the comics that we had before we didn't go in there was a lot more kind of backstory that i wanted to put in there there was a lot more that i wanted to sort of get in from those stories and i think it's easy like when you're in the middle of doing something you think you know i want i want a quick pace i want people to be engaged i want to be enjoy it but the feedback was sometimes it's a bit hard to follow so that's when something needs to be a little bit longer i mean likewise sometimes something that you'll have to do is a bit shorter so if you feel that something is dragging a bit look at what you can cut so there's there's a classic phrase you know kill your favorite darlings um which of course refers to like you know you might have a scene you really like or a character you really like or any number of single elements of your piece that you personally love and probably are really good but if they are killing the pace or if it doesn't fit the tone of what you're doing then you've got to be brutal and you've got to cut and it's hard now again we're going to probably talk about sort of drafting and redrafting at a later point but in effect that is one of the crucial aspects to recognize is that it's it's weird but sometimes good stuff has to go that's that's one thing to kind of recognize but i mean like i say so we're going to look at the idea as i say of a broad structure here to work with on a story so like i say for the sake of argument let's say we are doing an action film and we have our lead protagonist and we want to initially set up a situation now it could be that you do something like i say like at the rock or something where you don't immediately introduce the hero but you set up the situation that they're going to be facing so like i say for example with the rock you have the um nuclear weapons being stolen and you have the villain and he's being introduced and then you meet the hero and then the hero is this i don't want to say ordinary person they're not necessarily ordinary but what it should be is in effect they have kind of reached a certain level and they then need to surpass that level and that means in effect introducing this element of the story that they have to go on to and like i said there's different ways to make this effective but in effect using like i say using the rock as an example you have the nicholas cage scientist character and he doesn't feel that he's an action hero he doesn't want to get involved with this but he has to in order to save people because he's the only person that can do it and of course he then meets the other protagonist who's the sean connery character who's the only one that can get them in and you have that cool kind of buddy dynamics again that's another thing to remember you don't necessarily need a single strong protagonist you could have two you could have a, you know you could do lord of the rings you could have a group 
there are different ways of doing it. It is just, like I say, managing the pace of it, gauging who fits what role. Because again, it's, I mean, it's not to say that you want stock characters, but you have to kind of manage how they work and kind of divide them up. And again, like I said, we'll, we'll talk about more of that with characters. But as I say, during that middle point, after, like I say, after you've had that really engaging opener, you then have to kind of keep raising raising the stakes, put situations in there, put you know the barriers in and sort of test them and have those characters progress over time before you then get the ending. Now that suggests that we're going to sort of do this on a formula and it's always going to be happy. No, no, no. You could equally do that on a downward trajectory. You can do a Shakespearean tragedy where you can have someone start off from a high point, like you know, like Macbeth. Macbeth. Um, or Scottish play, I should say. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, it starts off with, this guy's a hero, he's fantastic, everyone loves him. But, as he becomes more ambitious, it then sort of goes the other way, and the, the complications about him taking power, and the obstacles for him keeping power, before eventually finding out that you know, the prophecy about him being this great person, there is a dark twist at the end, which was oh dear, you know, the idea of the from woman born, oh, hang on, he's actually born by cesarean section, so technically it doesn't work. So, I mean, okay, in Shakespeare's time, that would have worked. But you, you get the point. The point is, there is a clear structure there, and it doesn't necessarily have to lead to a happy ending. And likewise, this can re apply to biopics, this can apply to dramas. It is about a progression of a character and where they eventually end up. So, for example, with the social network, there is an almost kind of Citizen Kane aspect, whereby um, the Mark Zuckerberg character, because I was going to say, we're not necessarily saying that that is Mark Zuckerberg, but, you know, legal purposes. Um, but it's someone who, in effect, goes through this kind of progression, and, in effect, for all his success, he can't... You know, there are certain things that he can't do, even with all the money he had, even with all that he achieved, in effect, what he's lost through it, and the things he never could have, you know, no amount of money actually gives you that. And it's, and it's a great kind of story for that. So this is the thing, when you are looking at what you write, I mean, first things first, you've got to get it down. You've got to get it down on the paper, but the trick is, is to look at, the way your story is paced. And it may mean that you have to flash back sometimes. It may mean that you need a voiceover. I mean, these things are sometimes frowned on, but essentially they are tools. And you have to gauge whether or not they work for you. So, for example, the Shawshank Redemption uses voiceover really well. And it gives you that kind of mythic tall tale quality, which I think really works for that film. It doesn't necessarily work for all films. And some films... Like, for example, I was watching Blade Trinity, and I personally think it's a bad use of voiceover, because the sort of smart-ass um, Ryan Reynolds character... I mean, don't get me wrong, I adore Deadpool. It works for Deadpool. But for Blade, Blade is a more serious character, and I didn't particularly like the mythos of that world being undermined. Now, you might have a different opinion on that, and that's fine. But this is what you have to be kind of wary of when you write something... And more to the point, after you've kind of done the first draft, because I think first draft, you don't want to be too intimidated. You do want to get it down. But like I said, the crucial things to remember are, one, pace. Two, structure. Three, do the characters work. And four, are you using the right tools? So, I mean, the final point I want to make on this, because some people were probably watching this and think, well, I'm going to do something completely different that's going to be a twisty, turny plotline narrative that's completely different. One, watch films like Memento, watch films like Pulp Fiction. What you will actually find is that the narrative is very tightly structured and it happens to be in different, you know, sort of the way it's been put together is done in different ways, but effectively the principles of the narrative remain through them. But I mean, like I said, I would recommend reading the screenplays of them because that will really help as well as the books I recommended here. Um... But also, I have tried doing that before. I tried doing it for my dissertation. It's a headache. It is a headache you don't need. 
start off doing a simpler story. That is what I ask of you when you try and write something to start with. Try and keep it simple. Don't give yourself more problems than you need. Like I say, if a flashback works for a situation, fine, but obviously try and keep it consistent. Try and help, help it sort of develop the story and give meaning to it. But like you say, if you want something that's done right, you want something that will in effect feel consistent and this like i said this works for drama this works for thrillers this works for horror films but like i said the, the way things are paced and the way you do them are different so for like say for a comedy you're building up to a certain punchline but even if you're parodying something you are parodying the structure of a story therefore it help, it still helps to know the principle of it and then like i said the main principle of it so the example i once heard was the idea of you know act one is Guy goes up a tree, act two, someone throws rocks at him, act three, he somehow gets down. You know, if you keep it in that kind of frame, look, it's a metaphor, but if you keep that in mind while you're writing, that there's, like I say, you know where this is going, then it becomes easier to write it. I mean, okay, you'll still have stresses and stuff when you try and put it together and refine it and all the rest of it and everyone will have their opinion i mean we can talk about again feedback is another thing i want to talk about but i think that needs another section to itself but the crucial thing to remember is think about the story you are trying to tell so you write it out and then when you are redrafting look at what you're doing and think is this story as effective as i could make it and again, when you ask for feedback, it's a similar thing. Make sure that person gets what you are trying to do, not what they think you should be doing. Anyway, I hope this helps. I will be doing a blog to tie in with this and try and get into a bit more detail. But if you have any questions, please go ahead. I'm happy, happy to answer any questions below. Please share this with anyone who's trying to write at the minute and this might help them. As I said, we've got three videos up now, but we will be doing more. And a big shout out to everyone involved with the comic has really helped me out if, if these tips have been useful for you please consider donating because it would really help us out and have a good day all the best bye